some of the rewards that I take uh, from my ministry experience are uh, watching those individuals grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. Um, my major areas of focus are from my master's program are um, spiritual formation and evangelism. So those are the areas that I've been able to focus on as a deacon in the church. I think as far as the, as the deacon track, it's, it's a little difficult to define that role in the local church, less so than if you're serving in the secular world, like if you're serving like Lori Boltemeyer serves in, at the baby fold or one of the other. In, it's, it's easier to define your role. It's harder to define your role, I think, in the, in the local church. Um, is that, not that you, not, is that a strength or a weakness? Um, I think sometimes if that role is misunderstood, it's, it's, it's a weakness. But the, the, the elders I've been able to work with have been, you know, they try to understand that role in the church and, and try to make the congregation understand those limitations that, that the deacon and the elder, the difference in those roles. We just were talking about this yesterday, that in a smaller church, Sometimes you take on more of the associate than you do your specific ministries, and that's fine, but um, sometimes the church doesn't quite understand that role. Well, how is it really different than the elder's role based on, because sometimes you end up doing the same kinds of things, especially when the elder is, is gone or, you know, has to be away on vacation or traveling, whatever that might be. So, yeah, and we don't have many in this conference that, answer that call. So I don't know that that's our own, you know, own fault. I don't mean to be critical, but I mean our own fault about educating that. Um, you know, I think there's only two of us that really serve in the local church in this, in this conference. Um, the others are, you know, in secular work. So I think it's just a misunderstanding, really, of, of the role of the deacon and what really what they because there are many areas you can go into. You can go into youth, you can go into Christian education, you can go into music. Uh, if you would travel to the Northern Illinois Conference, you would see tons and tons of deacons up there serving in di different roles in the church. But as you get further south, we just, I mean, I don't know, I don't, I don't know totally what the difference is. Only that the Garrett Theological Seminary has, has the person who really identified that role, because that role's been around since 1996. So when the diaconal really changed to the deacon, and uh, so I don't know, maybe it's just that educational piece. Here are the things you can do here that if, you're, if you're being called. And I've talked to some individuals in my church, you know, God might really be calling you to, you know, to a ministry, just because I see the gifts that they have and they could serve better in that role then they might be able to you know go the full elders order so maybe it is just part partly education but there's a definite distinctness and when I even when I sit on the district committee and and and, and I asked Terry about Terry Harder about being on that committee only because you can really see those people the difference in you know, once you see their gifts and what they do in the church, you can see a difference of that, that they really are. There really is a difference between an elder and a deacon and how you're called. Even though you can do those things, you can do those administrative things, you, you know, you do those things in your work. But it's order and administration and those things that come. So you can really see the person who really loves to do those, those particular things, that their that they're gifts the advice that I would give those one who are just starting out, um, probably to spend time in study and private meditation and listen for God's leading, certainly. And um, being a second career person, I think sometimes that has that leads value to uh, your role in the church. I come from teaching background and I have um, uh, public service, and I also have. Uh, work that I've done in various areas in, in secular work that I feel like helped me in my ministry. And uh, as far as suggesting something, but I think you just have to listen for God's leading and, and continue that affirmation that you receive from, from your church. You know, I think there's a lot of things that happen in the church, even though I'm not serving as the lead person in, in the church, that there are times when you 
those experiences you've had, depending upon what that's been, whether it's been supervision or administration, those things come into play and help you through conflicts, help you to deal with maybe one-on-one -on -one personal kind of uh, pastoral uh, issues. Um, but I think those things help you, if you as you come along as a correct second career person. As I told the district superintendent, I want to continue serving on committees or doing my, I'm on four committees uh, with, the, with the conference and the district and want to continue work with those and doing whatever I can to help the conference. So I live in this area and, and, continue, and want to continue to, to serve the way I, you know, the best way I can.